Our next guests, Dr. Sherry Robb of Indiana University and Dr. Emmeline Edwards from the NIH, are joined by Jeffrey Franks, a mother and music therapy advocate, to share how one of Sherry's research studies led to a lasting connection, and also to discuss just how the NIH looks to support new music-based interventions. Hi, and welcome. We're so glad to have you here for the Sound Health Network launch event. My name is Sherry Robb, and I'm a professor, a music therapist, and an applied research scientist on faculty at the Indiana University uh, School of Nursing. I am so pleased to be joined today by my good friend, Jeffrey Franks, and Dr. Emmeline Edwards, who is the um, Director of Extramural Research Division for the National Center for Complementary and Integrative Health at the National Institutes of Health. To start off today, Jeffrey, you and I met uh, almost 17 years ago, maybe more, and um, it was when I was first starting to research um, an intervention that uses songwriting and video production. So can you take us through how we met? Yes, Sherry, I would love to. Um, and, and I'm thinking it's um, amazingly about 21 years ago, actually. We were uh, in the hospital because our daughter, Heather, had been diagnosed with cancer. And we were approached by you and your colleagues about the possibility of Heather being a part of your research study. And that meant that she had the opportunity to make a music video. To kind of set the scene, when your child is diagnosed with a life-threatening illness, it can feel like your life has become narrowed down to being on a 24-hour pager to that disease. And when that disease makes a demand, um, you have to respond in the best way that you can. And when she was given the opportunity to do the music video, I watched some really beautiful things happen. I saw her totally engaged in the project, so much so that my husband and I could actually leave the room and maybe go get a cup of coffee. The thing I really noticed for my husband and I is that we could relax our hypervigilance, which is something that um, runs night and day. I also noticed that Heather was given a lot of choices by doing this music video. She was able to pick among five songs. She was able to remove all the wording and put in her own wording. She was able to take pictures. She was able to do drawings and create exactly what she wanted. She also could talk about anything she wanted, and she chose to talk about her cancer. She was able to talk about anger. She was able to talk about humor. She was able to talk about hope. And all of that um, was able to be discussed during the making of this music video. So Jeffrey, um, in talking about this and describing Heather's uh... Uh, experience with this music therapy project, it seems like she was really taking charge of some aspect of her care. What sort of uh, tangible uh, changes uh, could you observe uh, from oh, her? Oh, yes. I noticed her energy level coming up. Uh, I noticed uh, a sense of purpose, and I noticed that she really enjoyed um, being in charge of this program. So I saw some happiness when that was hard to come by. I saw her kind of relax into this program. I noticed that in myself and in my husband as well. So Sherry, can I ask you a question regarding the project itself? What kind of measures, what kind of outcome measures were you uh, looking at um, in that population? We were using a measurement model that is looking at resilience. So what are factors that help um, patients to be resilient in the face of a life-threatening um, illness? And so we had a lot of positive health outcomes. So we were looking at how can we use this intervention so that um, adolescents and young adults increase kind of their armory of ways to cope with that experience. Um, and also quality of life outcomes and lower distress. Those are the types of outcomes that we were looking at. That is one of the issues that we are addressing 
in the context of developing uh, music-based interventions because we want to make sure that uh, the intervention is developed with uh, the purpose of, of uh, reaching a target, meaning addressing a particular mechanism. In your situation, you were talking about coping mechanisms and uh, you know, reducing stress and uh, also looking at the right measures to actually relate that particular target uh, to the intervention. Th that allows me to, to uh, talk a little bit about uh, what we've been doing at the NIH. Sherry is uh, one of the 15 investigators that were funded by the first uh, funding opportunity announcement that we had in the context of music and health. And we are steadily growing that research community to allow us to uh, develop larger scale study because in the past, although quite a bit of work had been ongoing, the sample size of those studies were very small and you really cannot generalize with such small studies. So the NIH is actively involved in providing funding to not only understand how music impacts the brain and other uh, you know, bodily systems, but also how music interventions can be utilized uh, to provide healing for certain uh, you know, uh, aspect of various disease. I was just gonna bring up to, um, I wanted to know if I could hear from Jeffrey a little bit more about um, your thoughts on, you know, a lot of what we're centered on with um, the Sound Health ne Network is, is really bringing different groups of people together to help advance um, research in music and health, public awareness about its benefits. That's all, um, very much centered on those, you know, patients, families, consumers. So I'd just be excited and interested to hear what are your thoughts about these new initiatives and, and the role of research from your perspective. I would love to see uh, more options for music therapy and more places in which music therapy can be an intervention and can be paid for. I am a, a real advocate for this. And I know that um, other countries are, lo are looking at uh, broadening the scope of these kinds of interventions and paying for them. So I'm hoping that this grows and broadens and can be available uh, for anyone. Yeah, well, and research, public awareness, stories like yours, demand for services, those all really, I think, play an important role in growing music therapy as not only a, a service that's more broadly available, but also as a reimbursable service. So, um, Emmeline, from your perspective and in your role at the NIH, you know, what do you see as important next steps in growing the availability of music therapy services? Well, there are a couple of issues. Uh, the first one is really what we are currently trying to address is really to uh, improve the quality of the studies. Without having a great evidence base, it's going to be very difficult to be able to uh, bring those interventions to scale and being able to incorporate them into healthcare system. This, these are the issues that we're trying to address by providing funding to actually develop uh, larger scale studies uh, to uh, give us the confidence that these uh, interventions have some efficacy and also could be scaled. The, the second issue is an issue of um, workforce. Uh, we really need to um, have uh, a broadening of uh, the personnel that's needed for that kind of work. And that is uh, why our approach is really to encourage uh, a lot of interdisciplinary team. So it really is a work that, that would require uh, a number of disciplines to come together. And that's what we're trying to accomplish by those uh, funding opportunities that we currently have available at DNIH. Yeah, they are so critical. And I, you know, as someone who's been working in the, the field um, for um, my entire career, it's, it's really quite exciting. The funding is so important to the acceleration, but also it's been the visibility that the um, Sound Health 
um, initiative is brought to the importance of music for health. And I think now with the Sound Health Network, it's just an added layer of visibility and it's giving us an opportunity to bring, much like we're doing today, voices of researchers, clinicians, um, consumers together. Um, Jeffrey, your voice is so important. The whole concept of uh, engaging um, patients and their uh, you know, families as part of the team is really important. Investigators have gone on and really created those experimental designs that were fairly far away from real world exp you know, experiences. Well, thank you both uh, for saying that. And um, as uh, Heather's mother um, and having gone through that experience and being a consumer of music therapy, I wanna thank uh, Sherry and her team for giving that to us and letting us be a part of it. And I appreciate um, being able to use my voice in this way. Well, thank you. Just wanna thank everybody for being here with us today and special thanks to Jeffrey and Emmeline for a wonderful conversation. If you enjoyed today's conversation, we hope that you will join us for the first Sound Health Network webinar in February, where Jeffrey will be back with me, but will be joined by Dr. Stephen Holocaust where we'll be talking about research focused on symptom management and the use of music to help manage those symptoms. We really look forward to what comes next. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to participate into this conversation.